Okay, it's going to be another audio-only talk today. It's been very busy, very busy indeed. And those of you here on the westerly side of the Atlantic, you know, the... Or actually, we would be the western. I think the other side would be the westerly. But <laughs> you get the point. Here in, in, the, in the Americas, we kind of... Uh, even, even if you are a person who is very anti-Trump, Please count your blessings because at least you don't live in Canada <laughs> and uh, Britain where you have two of the people who are possibly the worst leaders <laughs> ever <laughs> of anything. They're not, not because they're evil people, but they're, they're just horrible and they don't know how to run anything. They're, they're incompetent buffoons. You know, Justin Trudeau as well as uh, Prime Minister Theresa May. And if you think that I'm exaggerating, well, last week, apparently, Jody Wilson Raybold, I think I'm getting her name correctly, who was the uh, attorney general under Justin Trudeau, released a tape <laughs> where she actually caught uh, Trudeau's uh, privy counsel, who I guess is, you know, one of the senior officials in the, in the Canadian government. On behalf of Trudeau, he tried to strong arm her into shutting her mouth about the SNC Lavalin thing. So that that's that's a little bit, bit more of a of a you know a, a new development on a story that's been coming around for a while. You know, for a few weeks already, people have already known that Trudeau tried to basically uh, put his finger in the pie for a certain legal matter that he that he was basically doing for political reasons, which would be obstruction of justice. In, <laughs> it just is. That's obstruction of justice. For political me reasons, yes. Absolutely. Especially for a criminal matter that hasn't been decided in a court. Okay, you don't have to be... The, uh, you, you have to notice that the things that I'm talking about, whenever I bring up the law, these are not really <laughs> the hardest concepts to understand. I'm not a lawyer... And it takes maybe 20 minutes if you, you know, there's some, sometimes you have ambiguities about certain things. This, there's no ambiguity here. If you're a leader of a country and there is a pending criminal trial for, uh, you know, for various corrupt practices and you intervene in that and say, no, uh, it's, it's a bad idea. This, this will lose us votes. Yeah, that's obstruction of justice. That's obstruction of justice. That's, that's the way it is. Okay, if, if um, and, and by the way, if there's people who try that here in the U.S., I mean, if it, let's say if Donald Trump was to do it, I mean, do you think that we should pro we should try to, uh, you know, impeach him or something about that? I, I think there there's at least a case for that, and if it does happen, you know, it's it's going to be a huge embarrassment for him, for him. I don't see it happening yet. So this is during a pending trial. The worst <laughs> the worst situation though is in Britain. And the reason I'm saying it's worse is because you have Theresa May, who was elected on the mandate of delivering Brexit, and also Jeremy Corbyn, he was elected on the mandate of fulfilling the wishes of the referendum in 2016, which is the same thing, delivering Brexit. And Theresa May, of course, technically won that election, even though she completely screwed up. She, she didn't even get a majority, so she has to have her government propped up by the Democratic Unionists, which is a, it's, it's a bit of a sectarian, it's not a bit, it is a sectarian party over Northern Ireland. They're, they're, they're the, 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 they are basically the most unionist Protestant party in Northern Ireland that's represented in Parliament. And she depends on them in order for her government to stand. Now, because she can't, like, wake up and realize that the British people did vote and they decided they're leaving the European Union, come what may, Theresa May is saying, well, this no-deal Brexit will, will be too big of a disaster. We have to keep delaying it. And she did. And, and then, now that her, her plan, which is the most ridiculous plan ever, has been rejected three times by the House of Commons... She, she is trying to get it over the line again by going to the, the other moron in the British Parliament, Jeremy Corbyn. And I'll explain a few of the reasons. You know, this definitely isn't like an expert opinion here. 
But a few of the reasons why why these two, any, anything that they do will probably be uh, detrimental to the interests of, of British subjects, okay? The idea behind the Brexit deal is that many of these people want to continue freedom of movement in the European Union, meaning that, you know, people from the EU can just continue to to come to the United Kingdom without a passport and vice versa because they they think that the, the main reason that it's good to be in the European Union is because you can visit some cottage over in, in Spain or something or a beach house usually in the Costa del Sol or something <laughs> or, or they think oh well why uh, what's gonna happen now I'm not gonna be able to go to the you know beer drinking in Bavaria or whatever these people are idiots there's always been first of all traveling with a passport is not that hard okay it's it's it just isn't okay second of all this freedom of movement is one of the reasons that Europe is basically turning into kind of uh, you know it's it's melting into uh, nothing you know there that's why all these nationalist movements are cropping up because you know you have the poorer countries of Eastern Europe whose residents are see they, they, they see that they can earn higher wages elsewhere they go they go over to uh, Britain <laughs> it's the same issue we have with with uh, Central American migrants over here in the US you'll, you'll see Romanians they'll go to Britain they'll earn much more money as construction workers than they would in Romania so they, they, they go over there and and it's ruining the working class labor market in the UK but Jeremy Corbyn and Theresa May, more, more so Jeremy Corbyn, but both of them are pretty much, <coughs> you know, they're, they're haggling over this issue. I think Labour is, I believe Labour is the one that's more um, in favor of keeping freedom of movement. Okay, so the, the people who are all the time complaining about stagnant wages and, and what's the other thing, uh, austerity and everything, they're complaining that Britain is going to shut the door on migrants coming and taking the jobs of the of the working class. They they want that to continue. They, do you realize how ridiculous that is? So that's 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 the contradiction in the labor position. The majority of these labor party people are who are for a soft Brexit as they call it or even no Brexit at all. They want that to continue because they're idiots and they don't understand how labor markets work, how how wages work. Nothing. They're completely ignorant. And they believe in Marxian economics, which is, it's, it's only, it's, uh, that, that, that's, that's kind of a philosophy that only functions in, you know, a computer simulator, like, like that game Simant. If you remember, if you had an MS-DOS computer, DOS, MS-DOS computer from back in the 90s, you remember that game Simant. So, yeah, well, as long as you keep the ants fed, it's fine. <laughs> Now the, the other the other issues that they're talking about, you know, we want to stay in the common market. Um, <laughs> the, I mean, the European being in the European common market is not as big of an advantage as people think. And once Br the British uh, the, the British leave the EU, <clears throat> you know, they'll be able to conclude trade treaties with other countries. They, especially, you know, the the most important countries to conclude trade agreements right now. And it, it's, it's not a bearing on whether their governments are good or bad or whatever. India and China, you need trade agreements with them and they need to be on terms that are as favorable as possible to the country that you're representing, not for a transnational bloc like the EU, which doesn't give a shit about its own residents. They, they, could, they, could, barely get, they, could, they could barely be bothered to even, uh, <coughs> you know, to even listen to elected members of parliament in the EU let alone average citizens and and uh and 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 laborers or whatever or or even <coughs> you know let's say you open you own a business or a farm living in the eu they, they could care less <coughs> unless you're a part of one of these lobbying organizations you know large corporations they get a say in the eu because they can lobby there and they can talk to your bureaucrats and lean on them and whatever blah 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 they sometimes they even ask for more regulations so no, the European common market is, 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 is a joke. It doesn't help the, the people of the countries that are in the EU. And uh, I think it, it could be a motivating factor in the future of some countries simply leaving the EU or, or the common market itself having to be restructured if, if it even survives. Okay, the, the European Union is in a deep social 
and economic crisis because of the way that it manages its affairs because what different European countries have different interests. So when you lump them all together as sort of this federation of different, uh, you know, basically a multinational, multicultural federation, um, nobody's interests get served because you, it's easier to ignore the, the specific needs of a given country, you know, whether it's Britain or Slovenia or Romania or who, whoever it is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what country you're in. They ignore you in one way or another because they don't care. The European Union was not meant to look after the interests of European citizens. So when you see Theresa May or Jeremy Corbyn, uh, you know, virtue signaling about how, oh, we need to, we need to keep our rela relationship with Europe, Europe strong and, you know, we can't, we can't just, uh, you know, ruin our, our trade with, this, with these countries and, and workers will be affected and there will be no medicines or anything. Th these people are, are, are ridiculous. Okay, the, the European Union, when you stay in the common market, when you keep freedom of movement, it doesn't help British manufacturers, it doesn't help British workers. And that goes not just for Britain, it goes for every single one of the EU constituent states. If, if people want to do common markets, I, th I think the, the best solution would be if they do it bilaterally. Let's say if, if Britain and, and the Netherlands did it, I mean, that, that would kind of be a little more <coughs> logical because then you get direct negotiation between the two governments and both governments have to be uh, receptive at least to a certain degree to the needs of their own constituents and, and citizens. That's really the key to it. But but the people like Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, they're too fake and they're too stupid to acknowledge that. So that's about it. Uh, <clears throat> you know, let me know if you have any more thoughts or if you think that there was something that I left out or if you think, you know, especially if you think you disagree with me about something that I said concerning Brexit or Trudeau's uh, clusterfuck of a government. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.